Going down the left column of the consonant chart, we have covered everything from plosive, nasal, trill, tap or flap, fricative, approximant and lateral approximant. We skipped lateral fricative. I'm going to wrap up the chapter on manners of articulation today by covering lateral fricatives. But before we do that, we need to know what the word lateral means. Lateral, like coming from lat, basically means side. It is used as an adjective or a noun. And in phonetics, it's a term based, it's for the phonetic classification of consonants based on the manner of articulation of the sound in question. A lateral is a sound during the articulation of which the air escapes around one or both sides of a closure made in the mouth. So we have already talked about lateral approximants. The voiced alveolar lateral approximant, la, when you say it's lateral approximant, it means in this case, when you're talking about la, the air goes along both sides of the closure, the closure being created with the middle of the tongue touching the alveolar ridge. But when you're talking about ra in English, it is a central approximant. Um, so the air goes along the middle of the tongue. So because it goes from the middle, it's called a central approximant, which we talked about in an earlier video. The thing is, if air is released around one side of the tongue only, one will produce a unilateral sound. If air is released around both sides of the tongue, the sound will be bilateral. Although lateral approximants are always voiced, like in the case of, in English, the lateral approximant la is always voiced, it can technically, the voicing can be removed it can be devoiced. Devoiced means the sound is voiced primarily, but because of the environment, the phonological environment, the voicing will be taken away from it in that particular environment. For example, the, alve the voiced alveolar lateral approximate in English, the la, which is voiced, is devoiced when preceded by the voiceless bilabial plosive pa in words like play. This is how you transcribe play. If you want to provide a narrow transcription, you have to put this empty dot, the zero thing below L to indicate that L is devoiced in this environment. Now I'm going to get to lateral fricatives. The feature of lateral is not limited to approximants. Some languages have lateral fricatives. Although English does not have these lateral fricatives, some languages do. Two lateral fricatives have been recorded in the languages of the world, both being alveolar. Okay, now the question is, how do you pronounce these two sounds? It's a voiceless alveolar lateral fricative, and we have the voiced alveolar lateral fricative. If you want to know how you pronounce these sounds, you can find an interactive IPA chart online. You can go to the consonant chart and you can play these sounds. Asla, 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 asla. So there's two ways to learn to pronounce them. Either you have to find the language that has these two as phonemes and then find the words in that language that contain those sounds, or you can go to the IP chart and play the sounds like I did right now. But there is a more complicated way of learning how to pronounce the voiceless alveolar lateral fricative. In English, as I said, the L in the word led it's a voiced alveolar lateral approximant. Now, in a word like play, it becomes devoiced, which means that the voicing is subtracted from it. Now, the question is, can you pronounce la as in led and then la as in play? Alternately, like led, play, led, play, la, la. If you try to pronounce this in isolation, 
something interesting will happen. If you try to pronounce the English la by devoicing the la, that is by subtracting the voicing from it, then adding the voicing back instead of pronouncing it as voiceless, you will more likely end up producing a fricative. They will end up pronouncing two alternative sounds that can be transcribed as la 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 la. Now do it alternately. So when you want to remove the devoicing, it is more convenient for you to pronounce it as a fricative than approximate. So this is how you will transcribe it. Either you can put the dots, which means that sound is pronounced to be pronounced longer, or you can type the same sound again, which means to pronounce it again and again. Here, instead of putting the dot, you can type it three times as l and then three times as l. This is how you transcribe it. Because it would be actually harder to articulate l as in play in isolation. However, if you could easily alternate between la and l as in play, the accurate transcription would be this one. So you're doing la and then and then stay there and then add voicing without going back to la. Now turn it to voice. Now we are dealing with four possible sounds. They are respectively voiced alveolar lateral proximal, devoiced alveolar lateral proximal, voiceless alveolar lateral fricative, and voiced alveolar lateral fricative. No language makes a phonemic distinction between the devoiced la and the voiceless alveolar lateral fricative. And no language uses these two sounds contrastively. So this means that no language uses them in, in contrastive distribution. However, some languages make a three-way distinction between three of these sounds. For example, in the language of Zulu, in the Zulu language, there are three of these sounds exist. La la here, and the la, and then the regular la. So it's la la and la la and then sanza. So la la sleep and then la la sanza vomit. Anyways, in Zulu you have three of these sounds. Thank you.